Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. You beautiful, beautiful, amazing, wonderful people. And it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, baby. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. The terrific Tuesday. And we've got some meat and potatoes to talk about today as I'm going off on a little bit of a rant. What I need to say, first of all, is that this is just my opinion. You know me, I'm, I'm opinionated very opinionated and yeah it is no more than that it has no bearing on what has actually happened because we don't know what's actually happened and what am i talking about i'm talking about sebastian rogers of course there's been a lot happening over the last 24 hours we've seen photographs where some people are saying the photo has been photoshopped and and sebastian has been placed into it we've got other people who are saying yes it could indeed be him but we don't know when that photograph was taken it could have been taken a long time ago and other people are just flat out saying no don't look like him and then we've got other people who are going into the photograph to zoom in to show definite similarities between Sebastian and whoever is in this picture. We'll have a quick look. Um, let's have a quick look at it. So this is the photo in question, um, shown around X, formerly known as Twitter. And this is the young man in the photograph that we're saying could, could possibly, potentially be Sebastian. Now the family has come forward. Chris has turned around in one of the Facebook groups and said, no, it's not Sebastian. But we've definitely got some people who are doing a lot of work to show the similarities. Certainly here, I would definitely say that those shoes are very, very similar. You've got the little white bit on the side shown in both and the grey with a white sole. They're definitely very, very similar. Um, but then we've got some people who are, this is Chris Crowfoot here, look, saying it's not Sebastian. So it's kind of been debunked. A lot of people said that it looked like it had been photoshopped. Not too sure about it being photoshopped. Um, just been taking a picture with a really crap camera, which is always the way, isn't it? Always the way in these. There's a photograph. We've seen a sighting. Someone had a potato in the pocket and took a picture on it. Same old, same old. But anyway, I don't think that that's kind of the most important thing. The most important thing surrounding this entire debacle is the fact that this young man's still missing. Still missing. You've got Jays for Justice podcast seemingly trying to show what appears to be some fracas outside the property. Um, who knows if that's true? Because if I'm honest, I can't fucking see a thing in there. Can't see a thing. Again, some sort of special potato took that video, but um, I, I couldn't see anything. It made me feel that that's what that would be like if I was looking at some sonogram or something, and I, I don't really know what I'm looking at. But who knows? Who knows? But what we do know is, like I say, Sebastian Rogers is still missing. And my patience ran out fucking days ago. My patience ran out days ago. I saw Chris Proudfoot on a on a on a on a channel doing a doing an interview, and it wasn't really an interview. It was Chris Proudfoot absolutely running through three females, three females kicking off. It's just just a very very angry person. And then whenever I see the proud feet together, you've got Katie who looks like she's scared almost, scared. She doesn't really want to say much. And, and again, she looks, in my opinion, she looks scared. And then you've got Chris Browford who just wants to attack the entire world. And look, I've said this and I'll say it again. Nobody can sort of say how people will deal with these sort of situations. And unless you've walked in the shoes of these people, it's hard for us to judge what you see. But we judge anyway. We do judge anyway, because there is an expectation from the public, especially when it comes down to children. There is a there is a, a feeling of how people should be towards their children. You know, if you see parents in the supermarket and they're shouting or being overly aggressive towards their children, you will have a thought and a feeling about it. And that's just simply seeing somebody in the street and their way of perhaps disciplining their children. But what we're seeing in this situation is that a child has disappeared, has vanished off the face of the planet. 
Now, in the early stages of this, we could say, okay, even though he has autism, he could be quite resourceful. He could have got out of a situation and 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 left the property of his own volition. But as time progresses, three things happen. And that is that you start to see more of the parents and you start to see how they act and it leads to scrutiny because they're not doing things that you would believe that they should be doing. You then understand that as time progresses, the likelihood is is that Sebastian and his ability to survive out there in the wild, if you so please, is, is, is diminishing. It is diminishing because it's cold. It's He needs to eat, he needs to drink, he needs to be safe, he needs to be warm. And he, in my opinion, he wouldn't be able to do that on his own. So he's either with somebody who is helping him, willing to help him, and they are also unwilling to go public with it for some specific reason. And that leads me to the third issue, and that is that what people don't want to tackle is even if he left of his own volition, why did he leave of his own volition? What actually happened that was so bad that he's decided to up sticks, fuck off, and leave this property with his stepdad and mum? But nobody wants to tackle that. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to, to really get to grips because we see this and i've talked about this multiple times that this bubble of protection goes over the parents it's like okay they're they're in pain they're suffering their their child is missing and i think what needs to happen is that sort of mentality needs to be scrapped needs to be scrapped we can do what needs to be done to get to the bottom of why a child is missing and not care about their feelings because their feelings don't fucking matter. They can matter afterwards when we can turn around and apologize and say, look, at the end of the day, we had one thing in our in our minds, and that is we must find out what happened and where is your child. If there is something or someone that we can do or someone can do and get to the bottom of it, maybe their channel or the way in which they, you know, people like JLR who are out and about all over the place all the time looking, you know, I've got issues with some of the things that JLR has done, but his boots on the ground, he's, he's out there, he's looking. And if one of these people can, can talk to someone, see something, speak to anybody who may lead to Sebastian, that is a good thing. That is a good thing. But Chris Proudfoot, he doesn't believe that's a good thing. He, he wants the help as long as the help don't step on his toes and he seems to have really fat toes that goes everywhere and you can't do anything without upsetting him but where the fuck is this kid where has he gone he's seen going into the house he's never seen coming out there's this three-hour phone call between this couple, and who knows? Maybe they used to talk to each other for three hours all the time, and that's something that law enforcement should, and I hope that they are looking into. Was it a regular occurrence for this couple to be on the phone for hours on end talking to one another? Because if it was something that happened regularly, then fuck, that ain't got nothing to do with it. Maybe it's just a coincidence. But if they never used to be on the call to each other for three hours, and all of a sudden on the night that he goes missing, there's a three-hour fucking phone call, and that sticks out like a sore thumb. And that, to me, would be something that I would be pulling them in. I'd be pulling them in and going all over it. There's rumours that trailers haven't been searched, the houses haven't been searched, and, things, and I don't know the accuracy of that because some people say they have, some people say they haven't. But again, the only real fact, absolute fact in all this, is this child is missing, and he is a child. He is a child. He's a child with autism, and by the parent's own omission, he has the mentality of a 10-year-old child. You've got a mum who works for a security firm, and yet, despite what Sebastian has and the issues that he has, there is no security on that property whatsoever. Nothing. Not even to keep him safe. What if, in the event of him freaking out, he leaves? Did they not think that? Again, it's reminiscent of cases like Michael Vaughan. 
remember I talked about in that the shots over the bow. This was a guy. This was a little little guy who would leave the property, go walking off, wandering about. There were so many things that were warning shots to the parents that they ignored, and it led to him disappearing. Summer Wells, we crucified the Wells family. Don Wells and Candace Bly were absolutely fucking destroyed all over social media when Summer Wells went missing. Absolutely destroyed, ran through. Even the likes of the interview room, Chris McDonough, he fucking turned them over online. We were all involved in that. And I'm now thinking, what the fuck is the difference? What is different about Summer's case and this case? What is the difference? Is it because of what somebody looks like that that gives people carte blanche to annihilate him online? Shouldn't be double standard. It shouldn't be one rule for one and one rule for the other. I do agree that if there is a child go missing, no stones should be left unturned. Every single thing should be pulled apart. And if the law enforcement do not have the ability to do it, they don't have the manpower to do it, then let social media do it. Let that be a warning to people who do not look after their children properly or they think that they can fucking hurt their children, that they have got millions of eyes watching. And in the event that something happens to that child, they are going to be held accountable from the entire fucking world. Now, people may disagree with that, but I think that is a step in the right direction, making sure that children stop getting hurt, stop becoming collateral damage to useless fucking parents and stupid parents and monsters, because they are the things that children seemingly have to be scared of. Stupid parents, useless parents, and dangerous people. And it's happening far too often, and it needs to stop. Where is this kid? Where is Sebastian Rogers? And why is he still off off grid? Are we really saying that this kid is probably going to turn up in 30, 40 years as the new Grizzly fucking Adams? He left of his own volition, and he's gone off living somewhere in the woods. Let me know down below what you think, and I'll catch you all in video two later today.